lived a life characterized by constant change. And it's given me a perspective that I'm here to share. Growing up in Australia, I went to nine different schools and was constantly traveling. Unfortunately, I had to leave high school early and instead traveled around the outback of Australia working on various cattle farms. This photograph was me at about 15, just before my first competitive bull ride at a rodeo in a town called Charters Towers. I rode that bull for time, eight seconds, but I dismounted wrong, it landed on my leg and tore it open. I limped off in a lot of pain, my jeans were torn and my leg was bleeding, but I had a big smile on my face because at that time my values glorified such a public act of courage. The age-old masculine display of man versus beast. Back then I lived in a very remote part of the world and where people are not known for having particularly contemporary values. It's not that we didn't have access to media. We knew about the world, it's just that that world wasn't who we were. But when I returned years later, I found that their values had started to radically change. All of a sudden, they had entirely different views on topics like gender equality. All of a sudden, it was okay to be a vegan. When I lived out there, you would have been crucified for this. How could this be? Well, I did some digging and found the probable cause. Many outback families send their children to boarding school in the city. Those children joined Facebook and eventually got their parents onto the platform. And just like anywhere else, those parents were now connected to a conversation that was much wider than their everyday lives in the outback. A few years of sharing rainbow flags and hey presto, their values started to change. Now, saying that societal, saying that information makes people smarter and social media is accelerating societal changes is, is really nothing new. But what's interesting is that the data I'm looking at shows that this is not the normal generational shift in, in values. It seems to transcend age, geography. What's really interesting is the rate of change. Gradual change can be expected, but vegans in the outback? <laughs> Researchers are looking at this, noting, for example, its effect on moral development, both positive and negative, and it's not difficult to imagine how. Values were once passed down by the family and reinforced by our community or our tribe. Even as our societies became more complex, the vast majority of people were still living and dying within 10 kilometers of their birthplace. As we gained access to more information and were exposed to the influence of mass media, the conversations and sense-making were still happening locally. But the digital age has created a global conversation with, converse, with sense-making happening at the speed of a like or a share. This is tribal endorsement like we have never seen before. Is it any wonder that our values could change just as quickly? Our values always came from tribal endorsement. It's just that today that tribe is exponentially larger and endorsement happens in an instant. So I left the outback and I went to Canada, still a teenager, to work on the oil rigs. But with every new life I lived, I'd inevitably end up reflecting and asking myself, is this who I am? Am I a cowboy? <laughs> Am I a roughneck? In fact, I'm now 34 years old and have still never lived at one fixed address for more than about 12 months in my entire life. And over that time, of course, I've observed my own values start to change. They've changed quite radically. And I've noticed the same thing happen to other groups of people that I've crossed paths with. Now, you would think that constantly traveling <laughs> 
is probably the main driver of value change in me. But actually, I found that constantly traveling almost reinforced my established values because that becomes your identity. What caused my values to change was always the ideas worth spreading. It was the wider conversation and connection to the world that came from the digital era because then the question became, is this who I am in the context of the world and how I want it to be? This brings me to the key point I want to make in this speech. In the digital era, values come from inter-influence, not from established culture. We often refer to this current era as the information age, and yes, we do have access to information, but now, unlike ever before, we also have a voice that can readily reach the masses. No longer are a few powerful people or companies the custodians of influence. We now live in an era where the masses can influence the masses, and this effect is accelerating. This is what I mean by inter-influence, the masses influencing the masses, the democratization of influence, a time when values are no longer locally reinforced alone, they are globally reinforced. Think of some of the most prevalent components of our culture over the last century. I'll give you two examples, the sugary carbonated beverage industry and the automotive industry. Both have brands and products that are globally established, that have been central to our culture and loved by the masses. But then the information age happened and people started to realize the societal impact of some of these products. Their values started to change. They started to care. Where fathers once wanted their sons to value the roar of the engine, now increasingly parents are more concerned for the future they are leaving behind for their children as a result of those roaring engines. In the most extreme cases, heroes can all of a sudden become villains. And when values change, it's not the same as a simple change in consumer preferences that companies can adapt to. When values change, it can compromise fundamental brand associations, business models, and product offerings. I put it to you that the shift to electric cars, for example, is not just a change in consumer preference like Coke versus Cherry Coke. This is a fundamental shift in values. This is people saying, how do my choices represent who I am? and the contributions that I make to society. As a result of this, over the next decade, it's not difficult to see how this shift in values can lead to a coming brand apocalypse. I'm talking about enormous and widespread disruption with companies that were once central to our culture giving way to a world we vaguely recognize. What we know as order turns into relative chaos, and it is in that state of chaos that the opportunity for disruption and progress exists. Think about Blockbuster versus Netflix. On the face value, it seems that Netflix simply delivers the same thing, but with more convenience as a result of technological change. But in fact, their customer loyalty comes from somewhere much deeper because they have understood changing values and represented those changing values in the form of the content that they show in a digital context. So Netflix doesn't just change how we watch, but it's changed what we watch. So it becomes less about watching the latest blockbuster and more about finding that hidden gem that aligns with emerging values becomes appreciated by a wider group of people. These are the values of discovery and community in a digital context. So why is this important? Well, I put it to you that change is no longer primarily driven by just a new technology arriving, like the 
creative disruption that Joseph Schumpeter referred to. Now it is driven by rapidly changing values. The prevalence of change is, and always has been, fundamental to the human condition, and indeed of life itself, since the dawn of time. The obvious difference in our current era is that we now have information, a voice, and the masses can influence the masses on an exponentially grander scale than ever before. Of course, this doesn't mean that the masses always influence the masses in a positive manner. To paraphrase Carl Jung, get 10,000 of the most intelligent people in the world together and they can become a dumb, angry mob. So really we need to ask ourselves, what will be our contribution to the influence of the masses? What will be your role? And how will you deal with the uncertainty of change? I found a quote famously read by Steve Jobs to be particularly inspiring. Those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Very inspiring, but why do they need to be crazy? Well, quite simply, because change is scary. The mere idea of change inherently means uncertainty, it means there is a chance of failure, and we unfortunately attribute failure with pain and sadness. Perhaps this too will change. Change, historically speaking, usually implies some kind of struggle. And this is because of something very deep in our evolutionary programming. In the jungle, you will find an old gorilla the king of the jungle. And that old gorilla seeks to protect his kingdom until one day a young gorilla rushes in, kills him, and takes everything he owns. The problem with this approach is that most of those young gorillas do not succeed and some even die in the attempt. But thankfully, there is another way. To heed the words of Socrates, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. I can see that savage, but unsuccessful young gorilla in myself, in my past. Trying to battle an industry or perhaps an institution to change in alignment with emerging values. But I know that with persistence, and with an evolving mindset, heeding those words of Socrates, there is always a way to succeed. I want to encourage you to listen to that instinctual voice inside that tells you to create change in this world, but I want you to focus on why that is. It's because your values are evolving and emerging faster than ever. So build something, contribute something, that matches where you want the world to go, be courageous and know that your courage is contagious and if you build something good for the right reasons, there are probably thousands of people out there that see it in just the same way you do. It might be scary, but just remember that in the age of inter-influence, you are not alone. Thank you.